perspective, because I think I think guaranteed rates got some of the best food I've ever had. Never had the Glenmark burger before. Glenmark, really? We're going back next year to do that. I'm a big fan of the nacho bowl. Is that what that was? There is one over there, yes. They have a nacho helmet. That's ridiculous. Alec got it. Oh, so good. <laughs> um, then when this girl split it, and I'm like, there's beans in here? <coughs> you got to go with no bean. No bean, black coffee, ice. You know, God bless America. Welcome to HFT, by the way. That's my fantasy talk. Uh, we have not been on the air for a couple of weeks because we've been busy. It's been Halloween. And um, quite frankly, um, you know, there's a little bit of drama. And um, we have, we're going to jump right into it before we talk about any players, before we talk about me being four and four and making a run, uh, Duke. And yeah. I, real quick, uh, I beat uh, somebody in, in our league, 10 team standard. You know, we'll tell everybody about this 10 team standard. And everybody in the pack was about four and four, or three and three. This is a big week. Mm. A lot of, so I, I went from basically eighth to third, fourth, whatever. And uh, we had a player in the league. I'm not going to name names. We don't name names. Who was upset. And apparently, and you can probably have more detail on this, just just literally dropped his whole team this morning. Um, is that accurate? I haven't even looked in there yet, but dropped his whole team, was upset about the rules, and um, now we're faced with a, a situation here. Yeah, that's what I was told this morning as well. I didn't go on the waiver wire. Somebody else did. I got a picture. Um asking why this person's team was on the waiver wire. And I said, I don't know. I haven't looked. But I guess this begs the question. Fantasy owners and fantasy unwritten rules. To me, I think you just, regardless, you just don't drop a whole team. No. And if you're angry, you, you talk to the, the commissioner or other players in the league, you know, or, or, or other owners, right? What would you do in a situation, Duke, if you were uh, on the cusp on the outs? Mm -hmm. What would you do? Just let it ride out. Just continue to go forward, do the best you can, and I mean, look at the positive outlook. Look at my team. I get what people are saying. Sometimes we don't start um, players. You know, we don't start uh, players on certain uh, weeks, and and I. It's should, like gambling. You be. never know who you take, and exactly. it's always risky. And 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 I understand that. You know, um, I could not like one week. I didn't start Justin Fields. And mm -hmm. People got upset, um, and and you know, I still played a quarterback. And then one week I played a guy who was out, and I just wasn't looking. But that's none of um, really going to. It, it may dictate or impact the outcome of a game for sure, but it it doesn't change the fact that if you're in last place. To, to drop your whole team. You've got to play defense. You've got to look at the waiver wire. You know, you got to do your part as an owner um, and treat it like an NFL executive. And that, that the way that was handled was not great. And um, I just surprised one of the higher paying leagues. I found out too, for this person. Um, and, and it, look, I don't care how much money's on anything. I'm not dropping my whole team ever. I mean, you just, no, it would be, you'd be kicked out of the league forever. All right, here comes the president. Mike, um, you, you, I called you this morning and it was funny because I wasn't calling you for fantasy football. And then all of a sudden you're like, have you seen these messages? Like, when did you see, you're the first one who's seen this clearly. Uh, I went and checked the waiver wire and I saw Tua and Burrow on the waiver wire. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> unbelievable. 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 Mm -hmm. Sure. And I could not believe what I saw. I, 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 and I sent you a screenshot yeah, of I have it the, here. the we'll, current lineup we'll of the, said person. It's on the screen right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it, it on the screen. Yeah. And it's the most ridiculous lineup I think I've ever seen in my entire life. So this screenshot you sent me that everyone's looking at right now, this is the screenshot of his new team or the team that he dropped? No, that's the new team. So he, he dropped the he dropped players everyone. and then picked up a new team? He dropped all of basically all of his good players. And then he, Austin so, Eckler's so, on his So bench. then he put so then he went out there and took Tom Brady. Uh, Rob Van Kraus, Rob Rob Van Krause, Krause, uh, T. Y. Hilton. Okay. The, 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 he, he, okay. Oh, this is even better. Now this person is is holding 
Def- so so I have the San Francisco 49ers, and I was going to look at them, of the Bears this week, but I can't because they're on this person's team. It's a double whammy now. It's a double whammy. He, why would you draft fucking players and, and, and then get rid of players? You drop Be- your whole because team. He, because he's out of the playoffs now. That's so he just said, so you know stupid. what, I'm done. It's not right. So he dropped everyone so that everyone else can try to go pick up these players. It's the most unethical fantasy football thing I've ever seen in my life. Regardless of like who thinks this is crazy, who thinks it's whatever or whatever, it's seriously just the the whole point. Like you just even if you were never going to look at your team again or log in, you don't drop your team. So what's the penalty? Is the question. Obviously, he's not on the league this year. Out. Oh, he's out. Like forever. I forever. mean, there's big. They're big. big I mean, big it's up to the commission. Yeah, I'm not the commission. But he can get. But, but, but you he, know, if I was the commission, we'll throw a vote. Were, we gotta, a everyone vote. has to vote. Everyone has to vote in the league on what a. The, we'll, we'll put up a four voting question or five option answer of what we think should happen. Out of the league forever, uh, penalized payment wise, and then we'll have the league vote. The league well, vote and whatever it is, you're gonna. I don't uh, even the, know a lot of people in this league. It, it should be uh, put on a letterhead and put on on his desk. Please. What surprises me though the is verdict. are all these people made of money because. Fifty dollars to me is it's my only paying league right now. So I haven't played fantasy in a while, but now I'm really into it. Seven weeks in, get the itch, you know. I'm starting mm-hmm. to compete, you know, I'm picking up tight ends that are playing well and I'm taking advantage of nobody looking at it. But now I'm thinking, okay, nobody's looking at it, no one's saying anything. These people are paying 50 bucks or they haven't, and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's the commissioner. We all kind of just went into this, but I think I'm jumping around here. <laughs> but um, I think coming out of this. We we get the, the clarity straight and rule set, but it's still an ass fuck of a move. I'm going down. So that's really you know, regardless of what happened, I'm just a little upset. Like drop your whole team. I, I really don't know what else to say about it. Like I like the guy, I like who who it is, but I just can't believe that. Um, did he not think of the impact on everybody else? He didn't think about anything. I don't want my fifty dollars back. I'm gonna because I'm gonna win the league. Like that's my my mentality. And 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 everybody should appreciate sure every competitor's yeah, but, mentality, but, but Dave. If, but if the things don't get reversed, uh, it is there a so lot of messages? What's the lesson then? Think before you act in general, or what is this? What's the overall message here? I mean, I don't have the anything else. Is this is a fucking <laughs> fuck. Because the, the life lesson is don't be a dumbass when you're playing fantasy football for money. If it was just a non non monetary league, nobody's going to care. But that's what I'm saying. I feel like nobody cares no, except but uh, except us and Alec. Did anybody else care? By the way, happy Halloween. I don't think anyone's noticed yet. No one's looking at the waiver wire. What is it? Wednesday. Well, it, it just went through. The waivers just went through. Oh, so we got to wait. Right. So now all of his players are on waivers on until waivers. tomorrow. So okay. that's why it has to be we do it today. Okay. done today. Well, real quick. I don't know if you stand up. We can go right into top right. possible players to pick up. But I yeah. said my piece. Yeah. God bless you, Aaron. Um, yep, Ashmark. Yeah, you know, I'm fantasy flannel here. We're in the fantasy flannel for today. Um, how did fantasy go for you uh, this past week? Um, I made a critical mistake. You know, unfortunately, cost me the game. I had one of my players on my bench drop 29 when I thought Jacoby Myers was gonna have a great game, but I should. I'm gonna know now not to trust the Raiders' offense, especially now that Josh McDaniels just got fired. So, and I heard he got arrested. Is that true? I am not aware of that. Uh, I saw it on Twitter. I don't know if that was uh, legit, but getting released after losing the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions, I obviously understand. Uh, good football team, but just really not playing up to, tar- or to, to par with Garoppolo there. And, no. Um, you know, from a fantasy perspective, from a Devontae An- uh, Adams ownership, I would look for, for the Raiders to do something this week. And um, usually when you see you know, a quarterback go down or a coach, they play well. Uh, the following week. So, Devontae, it's an emotional state. Devontae emotional. Adams owners, I mean, he's still playing him this week, right? Or, or yeah, I, I believe so. It's just unfortunate, you know, for P- Devontae Adams to go to the, the Raiders. He thought it was going to be a situation that's going to help his career and boost it. Mm-hmm. These last two years, I think it's been a big downfall for him. Turmoil. Emotionally, I mean, I think he wants to play for a winning situation. Yep. That's what any great competitor wants to do. It just sucks. You know, I thought he was going to get dealt at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. I thought Adams was not going to be in a Raider jersey going into this week either. Nope. So, oh, yeah. it's un- it's weird. So, I I look, for, look at the offseason mm-hmm. to have him traded. I feel like Devontae Adams mm-hmm. and Aaron Rodgers, if possible, reconnect. I don't know. I predicted that. 
Yeah, I predict that's going to happen. Just you can mark saying. my words on that. Yeah, that's that's something I, I remember. You can book that on the timestamp as well. Book it. Book it. Timestamp. Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, reconnect. And gang green. So. In gang green. And I'll tell you what. The Jets uh, mm-hmm. playing well. Yeah. Denver beating Kansas City. I wasn't too surprised, but Russell Westbrook having a great week. Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell, excuse me. Wilson, speaking of Russell Westbrook being reunited with James Harden on the hard way, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, we've seen James Harden be on four different teams in the last like two years. I can't stand this guy. No, I can't personally either, but as a media personnel, Got I'm going to speak in the perspective of mm-hmm. is this a great move for him? Is this going to get him a ring? Is this going to put him to where he needs to be for his stage of his career? He's established enough in his career already. He's just missing that title, but mm-hmm. as far as the Clippers, I don't see them making it to the finals. You know, yeah, it's still hard to see. Westbrook is there. They've got Paul George there. Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard there. The core is They there. unloaded their whole bench they're not deep. just to get they're James not, Harden. They're not deep. You need a bench to win a championship in any in the NBA. I but, agree. Halloween, uh, real quick, was this weekend. We're eating the leftovers here. Did you get rid of all your candy or no? No, you guys, you had leftovers yesterday. Oh yeah, we do. So do we. I put the bowl out for a little bit too. Do you do that? You put the bowl out, tell people to take a couple or no? Oh yeah, hand it out. Yep. But I used to think that people would take more than what whatever note I would leave. Mm -hmm. So they said, please take one. I would take two. This year, I wrote take two because they're the fun, the minis. Mm -hmm. And. This whole podcast has been eating candy. So they're like, Jesus, Dave, just eating. But look at this. Three Musketeers, underrated. It's very good. Underrated. I haven't had Three Musketeers in a long time. Fuck me. <laughs> this is good. And it's soft. But the candy outside last night with the snow got a little cold. Some of the kids were complaining. <laughs> I had a conversation. Really? Yeah, and then VIP, you know, the neighborhood VIPs, VIPS program showed up. And they turned their lights on. And I was like, I came around the corner, had the fire on. And I said, are, are, you know, are we in trouble? And she's like, no, we're just taking pictures. You know, it's just, it, you know, it looks really nice. Our neighborhood yesterday at times was set up like something out of a Halloween movie. It was fucking great, man. Yeah, it was it was a good Halloween. Uh, but cold and chilly. Did you guys get a lot of weird weather out here? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was snowing over here. So you, you guys stayed in. How does your neighborhood usually do? They do good, or or is it get a lot of kids? Or we no? didn't have hardly any. Wow. Okay. Well, but let's get back on track here. Let's talk fantasy. Uh, as far you were talking about the Broncos. Uh, yeah, let's go Broncos. Them beating the Chiefs. It was the first time Patrick Mahomes has ever lost to the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Their offense is finding their groove bit by bit each week. I'm not going to completely be like, oh, they're right back to where people expected. No, it's you got to take everything week by week. They started off bad. They're coming off two straight wins. They're at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, is Russell Wilson playing good this year compared to last year? It's a whole big difference. Very, very. So it's not him that's the problem. Mm -mm. But can Denver as a team stay cohesive throughout the rest of the season? And I've said this about the Chiefs with Matt Nagy calling plays. Mm Mm-hmm. I know you believe that they can go back to the Super Bowl. Yep. A lot of people think they can sure, go back. Sure. Right now, with how this offense is being called, mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent sold. I don't. You know. can mark that too. I'm I, not 100 percent sold. I agree. I mean, they got a good defense. Look, and and I don't know what the hell's going on there. If they're if they're playing boy right now, and we're going to see a lot of you know they're just taking it easy. But they play the Dolphins in Germany this week. Yeah, that's an early one in front. This could possibly be playoff implicating game right here. What do you think happens this week with this game? High scoring. It's going to be high scoring. But Nagy, and I know this is going to be. Call, that's what I'm saying. The Chiefs can play any title game, right? And I'm going to make a bold call. Let's hear it right now. Dolphins will win by three. Okay. I'm going to book that right now. Okay. It's going to be a high scoring game. Mm-hmm. No one had really has been able to hold the Dolphins under 20 points a game. Mm-hmm. Their offense is too explosive. Sure. They have Tyreek Hill, who has, or already has over 1,000 yards. He'll break the receiving record for a single season this year. There's no doubt about it, as long as he stays healthy. I agree. Tua is playing out of his mind Out of his mind at an all-pro level. I know a lot of people are going to give me hate for it. 
Yeah, I don't well, that's like fine. That. You guys, I'm willing to take the hate. This is why I'm on air for all of you guys. The yeah. controversy is what drives me. Yep. And that's what makes debates fun yep. mm -hmm. and go and exciting. Mm -hmm. So I don't like Miami, but you guys talk. You guys, you guys got me on Miami last week. I like New England, and you guys said no, they're gonna they're gonna take care of business down there finally, and they did. And the tide has turned. Yeah, I think Miami is who 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 they are. They're better than New England, but I'm I think not, Miami is the best. Them. The Miami is the best team in the AFC East. I I do I do think though that if Miami goes to KC mm -hmm. in the cold. Are you talking about in the playoffs? In the playoffs. Let's, okay. let's say if there's an AFC championship situation. I can see that. I can see Miami winning that matchup. Oh, I can too. Even though Kansas City has a phenomenal defense. Um, just because that you got Andy Reid mm -hmm. versus the coach of the Miami Dolphins. Mike McDaniel. Who I love. He's a great I, I, I absolutely, offensive play caller. Um, admire this guy. Very underrated. NFL, 100% underrated. And I don't know. I just I feel that weakness from, and I'm surprised Andy Reid has given Nagy this. You know, how many play calls do you think come in from Nagy? I mean, I don't know if Andy Reid can, can, like, stop these I calls. think Andy Reid. Do you think he switches them? Like, Matt, no, that's a terrible call. Oh, he has the right to override because it's Andy Reid's playbook. Got it. Okay. Okay. Nagy, it's basically the same thing that's happening in Carolina. Hmm. Thomas Brown is calling Frank Reich's playbook. Okay. And I didn't a lot know of that. that's tur that's the term. Well, the news came out with that. Ah, um, got it. But you're seeing that happen more often now that with some sense. of these offensive head coaches. That's kind of a good idea. Yeah, because it grooms the mm -hmm. coordinators to be successful for the future. Got You've it. seen that with yep. a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. Mike McDaniel's one of them. Yep. He was under Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. Now look what he's in. Yeah, now they're both solo. They're both solo, and they're both – well, I think Mike McDaniel's their offense is a lot better. Well, and he – It's speed. And he has the weapon. He I mean, does. He's got more. But, I mean, well, you know what? How funny would that be? San mm. Francisco and Miami. In the Super Bowl? That could be a possibility. No, I. that's my Super Bowl prediction right now. Oh, man. I think, I think, well, television-wise, script-wise, mm -hmm. they're probably going to want Kansas City – that's definitely in the that's definitely in the so called they, they, script of the NFL. They don't that's want, always like that. They don't want Detroit. They don't want Detroit in there, do they? I would like to see that. Yeah. You know, because it's been a while since they've been successful. Yeah. I want to see it happen. Good football team. Very good football team. Very well coached. St. Brown, great fantasy week. Yes. Uh, what did he end up having? I don't know. I'm gonna go through some of the top players here real quick. Uh um, Arley, yeah. And then we'll go uh into some players that Folks should be looking at yeah this week as we head into uh, is this week eight here. The let's see week here. nine week nine yeah this is week nine okay now I have um oh this is great I'm playing Harry this weekend I like Harry Harry uh, is a, is a future uh, guy that we're going to be bringing in here yep absolutely to talk NFL gambling um and so uh let's go my other buddy's NFL gambling he's just a sports guy Harry's the sports guy in general that you can bring in for any topic. I like that. Yep. What advice do you have for owners this week looking at buys from the San Francisco 49ers, the Denver Broncos, as mm -hmm. well as the Detroit Lions? A uh, lot of buys and a lot of players that you picked up. What do you do with a lot of buys on your team uh, in a week nine situation here? I haven't really been in that situation where a majority of my team is on bye weeks. I've only had, I think, one of those okay. implications. I ended up winning that week when that happened. So okay. you just got to hope and put your best foot forward and put your best lineup together. Also depends if you're in a 10 team league or a 16 team league of who you're going to drop, who you're going to bring in. One of the players I did want to highlight though, and is available in a lot of leagues as everybody else is mm -hmm. and only doing this because I picked him up last week. Didn't play him still only showing about 47% uh, rostered here. Tight end Logan Thomas, Thomas, number 82 from the Washington commanders. Your thoughts on him. He's going to be a good young tight end that the commanders are going to be developing. You know, it, the offense is still, Adjusting to an Eric Bieniemy type of offense. Yep, you know that's what was so successful for Kansas City the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. You know he could be the head man very soon if they keep losing. Ron Rivera's on the hot seat. I mean, these old guys. I feel like he's old. Ron, yeah, they. The NFL is wanting to have a younger generation of coaches. Yeah, you you see that more often it's now, happening. right? Like it's you happening. don't see a lot yeah. of guys that are like Belichick's age and yeah. Pete Carroll. Sure. Well, That's what, rarity now. When I grew up, Parcells was on the way out 
and yeah. and we were seeing. I'm a huge fan of him yeah, personally. Well, we saw the Belichick come up as a younger coach. We saw, yeah. that, and now we're seeing that, and you're getting a chance to see that as well. This league definitely though more explosive uh, than in the past, but um, the NFL game has evolved. It's, it's evolved, and since I've been in my teenage years to now, it's a whole different game now. And you're younger. Uh, than I am. I was born in 84. You were born in 97. 97. So there's a bigger gap there in, in the players. And, you know, even when I talk to people who were born in 74, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, I was starting this guy or that guy. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun. Real quick, Logan was peppered with nine targets mm -hmm. uh, and had that red zone attention, including, I think he had a touchdown this week. Um, they played a tough game against the Eagles, too. Well, that was a, that was a big play. Uh, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy who um, <clears throat> you can look at. Um, and, you know, a guy who I thought about dropping dr last week, Zay Flowers, I think he's going to fit in well here against this uh, Seattle defense coming in ranking here in 24th. Yeah. Um, it, 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 are, you, are you flexing a guy like Zay Flowers, or are you going to look at Marquise Brown going against more of a tougher Cleveland defense. What would you do here in that situation? Because Brandon Ayuk, Jerry Judy, some other I folks would, on the I buy. would go with Zay Flowers as a starter and then Brown as a flex. Got it. Okay. Got it. Seattle's another team, too, that I want to say is... What is going on with them? They're good. <laughs> no? They I play think, well? I think it's a fluke okay. for right now because okay. the 49ers are not playing their best football. I mean, they just acquired Chase Young in the trade deadline to add to their defensive I line. I saw that. I saw that. Many people underestimate how great of a GM John Lynch is mm. and how the 49ers organization runs. Yep. You would think they don't have enough draft capital, but they're still getting better. It's 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 kind of a uh anomaly. You know, Pete Carroll, you talking about the Seahawks or 49ers? 49ers. 49ers. Yeah, well, they got to put it together. Yeah, He's they got to put it together. But um, I mean, that's that's moves that's going to put you back to where you need to be. They've lost three straight. Their defense isn't getting off the field. Mm -hmm. Chase Young and Nick Bosa on both sides, rushing the passer. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Uh, some other head, uh, headlines here. Patriots uh, top wide receiver born as a torn ACL. Yeah, that's very uh, unfortunate. We also got Vikings quarterback out with the uh, injury as well. What torn you, Achilles. What do you think on that? I think the Vikings are done for. Mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. Justin Jefferson is still out with that injury. Yep. They lost their starting quarterback. They're not going to be in contention for anything. Yeah, you got uh, Daniel Jones also clear to return from injury as well. Uh, how about Dobbs, man, yesterday really snapping? I have Dobbs. Uh, yeah, Dobbs is well. going to be a Viking. It's, I mean, it's a move that they needed to make. I think eventually he's going to be their starter coming down to the rest of the season. You would think. Who knows if Kirk Cousins will be back in Minnesota next year. He could be gone. Uh, yeah, he's not. I don't if, – if I'm them, I move on. I do too. It's it's just he's just yeah, I I don't know. It's just I not a too. good situation. You, you have to. Not a I good think situation. it's the Vikings. You got to go on the rebuild mode. I'm trying to look up here uh, real quick. What uh, Mister? What? How did how did Gibbs do for the Lions on Monday? He, he had, had a, a great game. Okay, that's what I thought because mm -hmm. that, that that really put me up on the total there. Oh yeah, Jamar Gibbs had a great game. He stepped up. He was a starter. The first drive of the game. He was the main focus of yep. touching the football. So, so many passes, too, right? Passes to him, runs that were explosive. Man. That's what's so good about the Lions' offense. They they are they have completed. Their offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, is going to be a head coach in this league one day. Mm -hmm. He will be. I was surprised last year he didn't get an offer. He didn't get one offer? He, I interviewed, he, offer. he interviewed. Okay. okay. He interviewed for the Colts. I know that. And a couple others. Really? Yeah. Well, the Colts interviewed like. 15 candidates. I know. I thought like that was too much. A lot. Believe me, I'm talking this in a fan perspective for just a second. Yeah. It was confusing Gru and stressful. Grueling. But I think right now we did make a very good hire. But yeah. This now is... back to the medium side of me. Yeah. It's you would never expect that many to go for one job. Sure. Sure. Most you see it's like four, maybe. Mm -hmm. Three or four. Yeah. Well, they say hire slow, fire fast. Mm hmm. So, and if you notice a lot of these candidates, they're younger and they're out there on teams right now doing something, most of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, D'Amico Ryan's for the Texans. Oh, He's a younger one man. who, from the defensive coordinator for yeah. San Francisco last year, I like now him. is in Houston. I like Look him. how he's evolved Houston. I like him. Yeah. D'Amico Ryan's. I like him. The yeah. Bears, the Bears need to make some sort of a, they need to get a coaching staff that will. 
is going to put it together. I can't even talk about them real quick. Uh, <laughs> for for folks who are wondering here, you know, and and really put the investment into uh, Jamar, Jamar Gibbs early, mm -hmm. drafting him high, starting to pay off here a little bit. Back to back weeks over 20, 27.6 uh, in week seven, 29.9 last week. Uh, on the bye this week, and then they got the LA Chargers. Another bad defense, uh, even though they have some pass rushers. Yeah. So, and then after that, listen, Chicago, Green Bay, New Orleans, Chicago again, Denver, Minnesota, Dallas, and then Minnesota. I mean, Gibbs is starting every week, and he's going to be a freaking workhorse. A lot squad. of people <laughs> are putting the lines at 13, 14 wins at the end of the season, I mean, which is their, realistic. Their schedule's a joke. Yeah. Holy cow, I didn't realize that. Okay, well, there you go. The Cowboys won the last Monday Night Football game of the year. Fun fact. The Cowboys game is? Lions-Cowboys, the last Monday night game of the year. Be tuned for that one. That's going to be a big one. All right. Uh, any final thoughts uh, this week for fantasy football in general mm. uh, going into uh, week number nine? Everything. You just got to be cautious of your bye weeks for your players. Put out the best lineup you can. You know, we're only halfway through the season. Playoff implications are starting to kick in. Mm -hmm. Teams that are struggling, it's time to put your best foot forward. Yeah, you know, uh, hit the waiver wire hard. Start making, uh, you know, I, I don't. I, our trade deadline is it over? I don't know. In fantasy, no. It no, it's. Going. I think the week of okay. Thanksgiving. All right. So, uh, uh, real quick, this was out too. Taylor Heineke is now the starting quarterback of the uh, Falcons. Yeah, against the Vikings, it looks like here. Mm -hmm. I know um, Ritter went out with an injury. Yeah, Desmond Ritter here. Uh, there. Yeah. Okay. It looks like he's out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. Taylor they play Heineke. the Vikings, you said? Yeah, Taylor. It looks like the Falcons are playing the Vikings this week. I give. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you got to go. Score prediction. Let's get, put on a score prediction. Man. I'm going to go 27 to 17. You know. Falcons favor. Okay. I'm going to actually go with the Vikings, and here's why. It's the old theory of uh, when the uh, quarterback goes down, they do rally and play better. Um, for the specific quarterback, I'll okay. do I'll do some more looking into this one. Let me see where this game is at real quick while we're here. This game coming up in week nine is what team we're we talking about? Falcon, oh, Falcon. oh yeah, Minnesota at Atlanta. Hmm. So that's just going to be a weird one. That's going to be a weird one. Look to but, the over. But I also think that you know why I'm going to say the Falcons are going to play better. Why? They're we're coming off a tough game against the Titans. Got it. Will Levis made his debut, mm -hmm. threw three touch, four touchdown passes in his first game. Saw that. Great uniforms too. Oh, his throwbacks. Oh yeah, one of the best ones I've seen in a while. Will Levis torched that defense. I feel like they're going to come out with more energy. Going to get a preview of this, uh, like you talked about this week, eight thirty a.m. game, Miami mm -hmm. and KC in Germany. Some other big games here. Looking at the uh, schedule. Real quick, Dallas at Philadelphia. That's gonna be that's gonna be a big one. That's a three o'clock game, mm -hmm. and then uh, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Monday night, Chargers, Jets, and then uh, Chargers, Jets. Yeah. This is gonna be a big one for the Jets. Jacksonville on the bye too. If the Jets can come out and win this game, they're getting closer to being in that playoff bubble. It's at New York, but you know what that means, right? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Don't rule that out. He's dropping back in pregame, throwing know. passes. He said in Pat McAfee's show yesterday he was not running, though. He was not running, hmm. but do they really need him to run? Nah, you know, you're, uh, that's true. Hey, real quick, Thursday night football, mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee at Pittsburgh. What do you got in that one? I have the Steelers defense on my roster. So I am hoping. Pittsburgh at home. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go Pittsburgh at home. I like that. Well, I think it's going to be close, though. Okay. Yeah. I'll give it, I'll say 2017. Yeah. I'll vote that as my final score. Okay. You said Cowboys Eagles? Cowboys Eagles is the other one. Yeah. I'm gonna go. You know, the Eagles are at home. They always have Dallas's number at home. Mm -hmm. I am gonna go 31 to 17 okay. for the Eagles favor. All right. Another over. Another over. I like that one. Bills, Bengals, you said for the next one? That was the last one on here. Yeah. Bengals, okay. Bills, Bengals, I had. It's gonna be an emotional game. We all remember what happened last year. With the Mar Hamlin collapsing on the field, yes, you know, yeah. I'm very glad he's yeah. better. Very, yes. I'm glad he's back. Correct. God bless him and his family. Um, the Snickers. At but him. I also, sorry, go ahead. No, we're listening. also going. I'm going to go with the Bengals. Okay. You know, they've been the hottest team in the AFC as of late. They They're always coming up do three this. straight. They always do this. They're last, but right? they know how to prevail. Mm -hmm. 
you know, Joe Burrow is finally 100% healthy. He's playing at a great level. I'm going to go with the Bengals here, 30 to 20 at home. Jamar Chase and him click, man. Yeah, they're this when they here. click, they're one of the they're a top five duo in the league. Dirty. Should I go take my uh, blood labs after this? Probably. My doctor is like, go get your lab. I'm like, yeah, okay. As he's eating candy. Well, he's kind of fucking sugar. <laughs> nine now. Gonna be like, yeah. how much sugar is yeah. in you? They're gonna be like, God, you're gonna, you're like, yeah. All right, well, yeah. My final thoughts are, um, don't eat too much candy, and yeah, look at all the rappers we got here. Don't drop, don't drop your whole team of fantasy <laughs> football. Never, no matter what. Never call your commissioner. I mean, don't be an idiot. Sponsored by the Black Coffee with Ice. Um, today we are sponsored by. Starbucks. We're going to get a lot of hate on that. Tomorrow could be Big B. I know a lot of Big B owners now. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's becoming bigger. I know an owner of one, and they're looking to expand for another one, so it's getting interesting. Is it? You know, coffees. I know a lot of coffee owners. I don't know why. I can't drink it. Really? <laughs> nope. I'll open your world, because we're going to have our own brand here soon of coffee. Are you? Can't be good. All right, we're out of here. God bless America. See you later.